You know where you are? is Appetite for Distortion. Welcome to the podcast Appetite for Distortion, episode number 469. My name is Brando. Welcome back to the podcast, Mr. Michael Shanker. How are you, sir? Thank you. Fine. And how are you? I'm living the dream. Where are you uh, calling in from, if you don't mind me asking? Are you in Germany right now? Somewhere in America. <laughs> oh, okay. I got you. I, I'm sure you, you don't remember. I mean, this was five years ago. You were on my podcast. You were talking about your the Michael Schenker Fest studio album, Resurrection. It was a great time, so I'm happy to have you back on uh, today to talk about this new project, this this new uh, album. Thank you. Yeah, my years with UFO, which are coming out, which is coming out uh, September 20th. So I guess let me just get started with how did this project? How did what made you, what gave you the idea? Because you, of course you can pick so many eras of your career. Why your years with UFO? Yeah, and- I mean, yeah, it's it's uh, 50 years. You know, I, I was uh, in '72. I joined UFO. Um, and uh, I was 17 years old. Uh, in 73, we recorded Phenomenon. And 74, it was released. So, you know, it's 50 years, a long time. And that's when it started with UFO. And, uh, of course, that um, gave me the idea to celebrate uh, 50th anniversary. And um, and I have also noticed in uh, in the past, few years that we releases they had no information um they just had the name ufo and the, and the song title but there's no there's nothing there's no uh, info no details and so i thought i'd take this opportunity to to inform people you know to to ed- either re-educate or or, re- or or educate newcomers um you know that have um Maybe they sing the songs but have no clue what what it is, and and so um, and and uh, also um, you know, strangers in the night is basically the best of uh, UFO. Um, you know, like when we used to tour after Phenomenon, we would pick a couple of songs to play on tour, and then for, force it. You know, we every, every album we made, we would decide collectively which songs we are going to present live. And then by the time we did Strangers in the Night, we had that uh, all together, and, and basically it became best of UFO. And, and so, you know, also it just happened to be that most of the songs, uh, the music, were written by myself. And so I wanted to also make that... Um, Add that to the info, and all together, and then of course invite, um, you know, famous famous musicians that have been and singers and and players that have been influenced and and inspired by by UFO and myself, and and celebrate with them. You know, I mean, they 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 were you know teenagers themselves or even younger than that, and and. Um, you know, they they got inspired by by that, and now I I can have them, and and it's a great a great um, pleasure to to have those guys joining me on this album. Uh, I I love everything you just said because I'm one of those, and I have to admit, I mean, I know music before in my time, but UFO, I mean, that's something I really need to educate myself more about the ufl band so i i not just with the music just the, the the education that i'm getting with this uh new record is pretty exciting but what's really cool is because i mentioned that you were on the podcast five years ago and you mentioned at that time wanting to work with slash but it's never happened now it's finally happened as the first single mother mary with slash and eric grunwall former singer of uh, skid row can you just talk about uh, that finally happening for you, you and Slash on this uh, this lead single? 
Yeah, I mean, it was just, you know, when, when Michael Fox, my co-producer, and I, we, we started, um, you know, putting down my guitars. And as we did that, I mean, we had no idea what we were going to do. But obviously, everybody had something behind, but no, nothing had been discussed. And, and so as we were putting down the music, we thought, you know, oh, what about this? What about that? What about who, who you know, had, everybody had some ideas. And so... Um, and actually, all the, all the, everybody who participated on on this album, um, you know, uh, was added to the whole idea um, from different sources and different, uh, you know, different times. So, basically, um, like um, with 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 Axel and Slash, like I mean, Slash, like you said, um, it was always, you know, on my. Uh, you know, I was always interested in doing something with him, but I guess when Michael first approached him, that uh, we're doing the, um, you know, the the UFO best of UFO, and uh, and read him the the, the 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 song titles, he he was for it, you know. And when we met in the Frankfurt recording studio, um, I, I I you know we were both going to jam there uh, to Mother Mary. And I, you know, I, I, I had my technician there and my amplifier, and uh, and Slash brought his guys and his amplifier, and actually Slash ended up playing with my amplifier, and we were supposed to do a a a, a jam, but then I realized, hey, Michael, I already I already put all my guitars down. Why we are wasting time, you know, doing additional stuff? I already like what I did, so we were, you know, I I I, I was more more into focusing on slash and getting great takes and add them to what I was already what I already had done and so that uh, slash liked that idea and and then also uh, when he came in he said Michael I just told Axel that I was going to do this and that I'm on my way to do this and he said oh I I want to I want to sing a song too and and I said to Slash, that would be fantastic, you know, ask Axel which song he would like to do. And so actually Axel ended up singing uh, Too Hot to Handle, um, uh, Only You Can Rock Me, and uh, Love to Love. But I think they also were on tour at the time, and so um, they uh, Axel was not actually happy with his performance on on um, uh, only you can rock me and too hot to handle and uh, and I guess it was too many songs um, because they were in the middle of a tour and uh, he he preferred to just focus on love to love and uh, he is a perfectionist I I have noticed and so you know we waited until he was ready and 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 then finally he went okay love to love I approve you can release it and that was it. That's amazing. I was actually I was going to ask that. Of course, the, the one of the big marquee names on this record, Axel Rose. It seems like you did the impossible because it's very hard to get him to do new music. The last recorded music he did was for prior to Love to Love coming out was on Looney Tunes. So it's 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 difficult and it's very awesome to learn that he asked. You didn't ask Axel that he asked one slash told him. So if, to make sure I get this right, he initially was going to sing three songs on the record but decided to go with one just to focus on the one with no, yeah but he did he did he did already record only you can rock me and too hot to handle and okay. love to love but he didn't like what he did he he didn't have enough time to perfect ah. the um love the, the only you can rock me and too hot to handle because they were in the middle of a tour but he had, you know, time and commitment for one song, and he chose "Love to Love," which is an absolute amazing uh, uh, version. You know, uh, incredible. Oh, that's that's too cool. So, a couple questions with that. This one, I'll give credit to one of my listeners on Twitter, uh, Ali GNR, because you, you you alluded to it a little bit with when you were talking to Slash about what you wanted. So, like when, like with Axel, how much of like a producer? were you did you want him to sing in his typical guns and roses voice did you want a different octave how did you approach just let him do his thing how did you approach trying to be a producer for axel rose on your music do your thing <laughs> okay 
I love that. <laughs> <laughs> do do your thing. <laughs> oh, br- yeah. oh, brilliance. Um, because I, I want to get because it's not all, of course, Guns N' Roses people uh, on the on the record, but. Uh, can you talk about maybe Stephen Piercy making a record, uh, an appearance with Shoot, Shoot? How did that come about? How far back do you go back with Stephen? Okay, well, Stephen, you know, I, I, I love the song Round and Round. Um, and uh, I, Robin McCauley and I, we bumped into uh, them when they were touring that song. And uh, I learned that they were big fans. That's why I met Warren D. Martini. And so, so basically... Um, uh, wait a minute. So I got sidetracked now. Um, it was what was the? Oh yeah, Stephen. Okay. So so basically, Stephen. Um, I was on a Monsters of Rock cruise, and uh, he saw me and came towards me with his arms open, say, "Michael, we love you." And I said, "Hey, Stephen, can you sing on my record?" <laughs> and so he did. You know, and I, I, the same happened. With, I mean, you know, another another way. How we got people on board was uh, with Dee Snyder. Um, I, I was given an, an award in, in Wales, and, um, and and Dee Snyder was there too. And so the music was playing very loud uh, as we were sitting at the table, and, and Dee Snyder was sitting right next to me, and he was shouting in my ears, Michael! When we did the UFO reunion, I was there in New York with my guys, and I said to them, this is a reunion. Mm-hmm. And they said, hey, do you want to sing on my, on my album? And so, you know, it happened. And, and Beth Barthort from Saxon, he, it was a festival. He was right next to my dressing room. It was just a curtain dividing us. And so I pulled the curtain to the side and said, hey, Beth. You want to sing on my record? He said, "Sure." <laughs> so he did a great, amazing, amazing version. So did Dee Snyder. I didn't know that he had such a powerful um, voice. Yeah. You know, for natural thing, it was just very incredible. Yeah, no, Dee is one of those people that surprises you. That if you only know his Twisted Sister stuff, you're missing out. Like he just has such range, and that's why I think it's so cool. Because this is what. Like Slash recently did on his blues record or his first solo record where you just get this collection of talent and you're the constant throughout it, which I just think is just a fun record to experience. And and, and before I forget it, because on the subject of uh, Stephen Piercy, so I can inject another listener question for you. Uh, this is from Mark Lamb. Uh, this is a little bit of a deviation. Uh, how were you approached initially to join Rat? Because I know there's a lot of bands that have wanted your services over the years, but it didn't. <laughs> well, I didn't. I didn't. Yeah, I didn't really join them. I helped them out. Uh, Warren De Martini became a friend and a fan. Uh, he, was a, he was a fan. Uh, I learned, and then he became a friend, and we were hanging out together. He was in Los Angeles. I was in Los Angeles, and then um, uh, Crosby died, and and he asked me um, if I would if I could help out, and I was in the middle of. I was actually in a period of six months waiting for making a record with Robin McCauley with the new management in Los Angeles. And uh, that was the period when I did the contraband and when Rat asked me to help out. And I said, OK, I, I do that. I have time until so and so. And so I went on tour with them. Just throughout your career, again, we're celebrating 50 years of UFO, but all these little side stories. The adventure of this record is so fun. Just knowing it's 50 years of UFO. But when you think about your career, all the, I don't want to call them detours, because they're like side adventures of just different bands that you may not have joined, but you had a part of their history, and you're doing your own thing. So it's just almost, is, do you feel like it's almost like a full circle moment to do something like this, this 50 years uh, of UFO uh, with some oh, of your friends? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. It's a psych- full cycle. I mean, Gibson is back. Uh, I'm celebrating back w- uh, with Gibson, uh, it's, uh, you know, 50 years ago since I first played The Flying Bee, uh, and 50 years uh, since I stop- stopped listening to music, uh, you know, to, to self-express, and, uh, and, and the UFO, you know, it's, it's, it's just uh, everything is coming back. Oh, it's, it's it's so cool. Again, this is not just like a record just to listen to that it's enjoyable if you like rock, classic rock music, but just the history lesson that you get and just the the surprises I think you get on each record. You know, you got 
you know, Carmen, uh, 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 it depends on who you, you ask and how you pronounce it. Carmen, uh, Apis or Apice? It, it, his bro- I know him and his brother pronounce it differently. Yeah, Apis. <laughs> Apis. I, I think it's Apis. I, I've, yeah, had the, I've had the fortune of interviewing him before, and he says, like, because him and his brother pronounce it differently. I just think that's so funny. So everyone knows. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, everyone knows how yeah, to. Uh, I know everyone knows who you're talking about. That's all. Uh, and, and you know what? Before I forget, though, because yeah. I mean, especially with this podcast and, and with Axel Rose, um, was there any temptation? Because I, I, I have my thoughts about it to put Axel and Slash on the same song. Because I would think you wouldn't do that because that would be too Guns and Roses y. And this is not about that. So just out of curiosity, was that ever a thought to you, or you wanted Axel and Slash to be on separate tracks just to? You know, each have their own mark. No, there was no, there was no concept whatsoever. I mean, uh, Joey Tempest and Norum didn't. John Norum didn't end up on the same songs either, because everything came out spontaneously. Mm. It, tri- it trickles in from all sides. You know, record company had ideas. The Michael Foss had ideas, and and I bumped into uh, the guys. I just told you a few stories, and so you know, it it was. It was just like it just came falling in, and and, and it just everything took its own place somehow, somewhere, mm-hmm. and, and, and and that's what it became. Beautiful organic rock and roll. That's the way I like it. And <laughs> I, I can't I can't imagine this being this this will be uh, successful. So I don't know if you have plans to. I mean, if you're even thinking this far ahead, because you're already talking about how Slash recorded some jamming with you and Axel recorded a couple other songs. Is, are there leftovers that perhaps we will see in the future of, um, of My Years with, U- with a UFO? We'll see uh, My Years with a UFO Plus or Part 2. Any of that uh, are you thinking about? Well, I mean, there can always be a plus, a, a, a part two, of course. And but you know, I mean, the only the only leftovers that are there are the um, only you can rock me and too hot to handle. Uh, but that is um, not my property, you know, until it is um, released by by um, Axel. Until then, it 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 belongs to nobody. Oh, interesting. Do you uh, the one that is done? Love to love. Do you know if that's going to be a single, or we're we going to have to wait until September twentieth? I wish. I wish it was a single. I mean, it's not going to be a single like the campaign we're doing right now because that's only three singles, and so we have uh, Mother Mary. We have got Rock Bottom, which is right now, and then in, in uh, around twentieth of August, um, or, or was it fourteenth uh, uh, of August? Um, I think our 28th of August, uh, we release only You Can Rock Me, um, featuring Joey Tempest and Roger Glover. Mm-hmm. And then um, the album comes out. And uh, so, so you know, it's funny that you say that because um, Love to Love is one of the, you know, um, it has been around for 50 years, or mid of 50 years since, since uh, Lights Out. But... It is a, a a very interesting song because it has got so many moods in it. And what Axel did with it, like a little bit of kind of country approach, maybe. Uh, I don't know. It just sounds very suitable for America. And uh, and I was saying that, you know, myself to someone I was talking to, man, you know, this song could be a really good big single in America. And, and you know, who knows? Maybe it just happens by itself that radio stations, etc., just choose this song to play it because it's such a known song, but it was never um, highlighted as a single. It was just, it had its own legs, and, you know, it, it's it's always the kind of the one of the most liked um, songs uh, of, like, UFO fans. And I, I would just wonder what can happen to that song, especially with Axel singing it. I think there is a really good chance that something will happen with it. Very cool. I mean, just what an amazing project this is. And I'm, I'm excited for you because it's, again, just it's a celebration of of your career with some of your best friends. You know, you mentioned Dee Snyder, Joel Holkstra is on there, Jeff Scott Soto is on there, uh, Biff Byford. I mean, so many just like classic Joe Lynn Turner, just am- amazing voices to complement your guitar playing, which is just uh 
So cool. Anything? Any plans for a tour? Because that could be a challenge when with an album like this. Like I just saw Slash, and he he took uh, some people out that were on his blues record. But obviously, you can't bring everybody out. Maybe you have guest appearances on tour. So, what's your plan to if you're going to tour with My Years with the UFO? Yeah, I mean we do. We do have plans. We already committed to a couple of of uh, festivals like Wacken in twenty five and uh, um, uh, Alcatraz. And then, of course, I want to play Japan. And Axel already, I heard from from Michael Foss that Axel uh, expressed um, uh, interest in 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 doing the Japanese tour. And so, and because there are so many uh, singers on here, and you know, getting. You know, putting together a tour, you have to do like one year in advance and you have to find people available. But because there are so many singers on this out, great singers on this album, it would be, I can stretch this, you know, on forever because, mm. I mean, they, they, you know, maybe seven, seven guys are not available, but maybe three of them. But because they're all great, <laughs> you know, it would be so um, um, entertaining for the audience, you know, to, to watch the same show with a different singer to see what how that comes across. I mean, I, I mean, it's endless the possibilities. I agree with you uh, absolutely, and that's what it, it's exciting. And I know a lot of my listeners have already pre-ordered the record because this just seems like a really fun time. And with the touring, that even adds another layer to it. Do you have like your band set up the the tour? Like, do you know like who is making up uh, your band when you go out on tour? Yeah, I mean, you know, that that the most, it was not my, um, I, I was kind of a little bit kind of confused when I saw that Apple uh, Music and, 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 and uh, uh, Amazon, et cetera, um, uh, advertised and the Michael Schenker Group, you know, because for me, Michael Schenker Group is the MSG, the one that I'm playing with. But but on the other hand, anything is Michael Schenker Group. Uh, <laughs> if you think, <laughs> right? Of so many different lineups. I mean, anything is Michael Schenker Group. So I thought, okay, it kind of destroyed a little bit of my 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 concept. But maybe it's a good thing I can use this. And because it's very hard to put this, uh, you know, this uh, with the original lineup to to get the. You have to find promoters who are willing, you know, to to pay what we need as a budget. And, uh, of course, it makes a difference, you know, um, where you're flying people in from, where they're coming from, who it is, et cetera, et cetera. So Japan is kind of one of the first steps where a, a, a bigger thing can happen with, with like, the All-Star Band or the original lineup. But until uh, then, you know, you have to start somewhere and you have to, start committing and like i said it's like one year ahead i mean we don't know what's happening in one year from now you know because we are still in the middle of the campaign it is still the second release of the single the third release of the single is coming out in in our, at, uh, the, around the 28th of august and then the september the, the album is going to be released by then the whole picture looks completely different you know we know more of what's going to happen etc etc so it's kind of I have to risk to start, otherwise I'm just going to be sitting around and and you know just waiting for something. So I, I decided to use my Michael Schenker group with Eric Cronwell, who sang uh, Mother Mary, um, as the singer, and and that's how we're probably going to do the, all the, the the summer festivals. Okay, I, I understand all of that. I mean that's. It's a very smart way of thinking, and you're right. I mean, how will we know what's going to happen a year from now, given the world it, it, as it is today? Tomorrow isn't really guaranteed. We don't know what's going to go on. And with setting up tours, I can't imagine <laughs> the amount of detail and work and all the moving parts that go into it. But regardless, I mean, you've been doing it for 50 years, so obviously it's going to go off and be really successful. And again, my years with UFO going to be released September 20th via Ear Music and you can pre-order it now. Uh, Michael Shanker, thank you so much for your time. This really was a pleasure, and I hope we get to do this again. Great. Thank you, Brandon. You have a great day. You too. Thank you. Bye-bye. Really nice man. I enjoyed that conversation. I hope you did too. And completely surprised by the the Axel story in this regard, because in my head, I'm thinking, 
okay, he finally got to work with Slash, and maybe he said to Slash, you know, while they're in the studio, hey, what do you think the chances are working with Axel and just the story would have started there? Completely surprised that it was Axel that offered his services. Oh, can I get on that? And the fact that he did three songs? Crazy. So, I mean, it's kind of like, whether it's for UFO, Michael Shanker, or Guns N' Roses, it's almost the same. Like, you record more material that you're willing to put out, and he wasn't satisfied. So it makes you wonder if we ever hear those other UFO songs, ever. And it's interesting that Michael doesn't own them, that they're Axel's property. But all well and good. We're going to hear a new Axel, recorded Axel, for the first time, what, since Rock the Rock? Looney Tunes, which I don't even think you can download. I think you just have to watch like a clip online to hear it. So this could be the first recorded guest spot Axel has done. I can't believe, like, what, since Sebastian Bach's Angel Down back in, what, 2007, 2008? And he did three songs for that as well. That's crazy. How has it been that long? And even before that? What, he's only done, what, uh, Steve Jones, a solo album back in 89, and Don Henley's solo album, Age of Innocence. Wow, man. It really just goes to show you what Axel thinks of Michael Schenker and UFO and how much respect and just wanting to be a part of that. Very cool. And Well, and speaking of Axel, before we wrap up, of course, by now you know he appeared, I guess, appeared live with Billy Joel for Billy Joel's final of his uh, Madison Square Garden residency he's been doing here in New York City for the last several years, 150 shows. I never had a chance to go. I mean, I never, uh, to be honest with you, I never put in the effort. I like Billy Joel, but they're expensive, man. And I really always save my money for Guns N' Roses. My wife and I did talk about it, but now it's obviously too late unless he does like spot, you know, if he does, does stuff on Long Island or maybe knowing her, we'll take a trip somewhere to go see him. But the fact that he got Axl Rose, the guest on a few songs live, that says a lot about Axl, what Billy thinks about Axl. Yes, they've guested before. Axl has gone on stage with Billy Joel before. This is different because this was his last show, Billy Joel, as I said, on that in this legendary run. It was all about him. He didn't need to have a guest. So I would love to know how that happened. Maybe he was having dinner with Axel. He's like, eh, hey, come on, come on. Let's, let's, let's do it. Let's have some fun. Never thought I would hear Axel sing You May Be Right, which was my favorite of the, the, the three covered. <laughs> so very cool to see Axel out and about doing stuff. He actually, there was a photo taken of, he was in a restaurant around his hometown in Indiana. So he's back home visiting some some friends that I, I saw on this thread that he's just visiting some hometown friends. So he's out and about. He's contributing to records. So he's doing stuff. Yeah, Slash and, and Duff may be a little bit more visible, but Axel seems pretty busy. So we'll see what's to come. I know Slash and, and Duff uh, have said that 2025 is the year of, of Guns N' Roses. Is it going to be just touring? I got to imagine new music more than just a random single or two. I mean, this got to be the year of the album. This has to be the year. I don't think you can really kick this can down the road again. It's, it'll be successful, but to go another year and having this, what I deem a really successful campaign for Slash with Orgy of the Damned and this tour, which again, uh, I, I'm probably most likely just going to write it up on AFDpod.com just when I have the time to my review of, of the show, which I hope it becomes like the um, kind of like an Ozfest for the blues. I would love that because it was just a great time. It was just a really fun uh, show and to, and to see Slash. I hadn't seen him that close, maybe since Velvet Revolver. And I was like, side stage in the ADA handicap area and on the his opposite side. So I wasn't even like that that close, but certainly closer than I've been with all the Guns N' Roses shows. So just to see Slash in person again doing this thing. And this is one thing I did want to mention on the Lucy Blue episode. 
because it's just something that was in my head the entire time. And I'll, I'll, again, I'll, I'll write about it on uh, afdpod.com, but slash back in the road after losing a stepdaughter. And some people might, oh, that's too soon. And of course, people grieve in different ways. But I just want you to know, I was on air five days after my dad because I just knew it was now or never. And you got to go back doing what you love. So to see Slash doing what he loves up there, blues, rock and roll, and Teddy up there, it was just awesome. Just awesome. So I can't wait to see Axel and Slash because I will take Baby Brownstone next year. I've been told by some of you that you've taken like your kids as young as two to see GNR. We'll probably have to get a seat up high though uh, for for that. And I I'm glad I didn't take him to see Slash because we were we were too close. I think Slash was just a little too loud, <laughs> which was okay. Not for me. I still think he's a little too young for something that loud. So I'm glad I didn't take him to see Slash. But next time, come on, Guns N' Roses, let's go. I got to take my kid. That, that's a dream. That's, that's a dream of mine. So look good forward to that. Look good forward to the next guests on Appetite for Distortion. I did mention last episode, ZZ Ward will be on the podcast. Speaking of Slash's Serpent Festival, have you seen her live? I should have seen her, but I wanted to wait out the rain. So I'll, I will apologize to her for that. And this just confirmed Dave Kushner coming back to the podcast, Appetite. Or distortion he's coming back it's been a long time it's been years and i'm excited 20th anniversary of contraband we're going to talk about it that might be the next episode yeah i think i'm thinking so stick around for that man just you never know what's going to come Keep checking afdpod.com for updates, all the social media sites. The conversation continues in between the broadcast. Until then, when will you see these episodes and interviews? In the words of Axel Rose concerning Chinese democracy, I don't know as soon as the word, but you'll see it. Thanks to the lame-ass security, I'm going home. <laughs>